Hello everybody, we are going to dive deep into NumPy module today. If you have watched my previous tutorial, you have initial idea on what NumPy module is and how to install it. In this tutorial, we are going to look, take a detailed look at NumPy's array object, which is the main feature of this module. So let's begin by importing NumPy as NP. Now, as you all know, you can create multi-dimensional array in NumPy using np.array. Now, this is how you create, let's say, one-dimensional array and you can access it just like your list. But to create two-dimensional array, you can do again this it the syntax looks pretty similar to how you would do it with a normal python list so you create your two two dimensions and you initialize it with these list of elements so this is my two dimensional array now there is this property called endim that you can use to print the dimensions okay so if you have let's say this array and if you print and dim it will be one but now i have this uh, two dimensional array for which the dimension would be two okay there is item size property which will print the byte size of each of these elements now these are integer elements so that's why the item size is four bytes as you know that integers occupy four bytes if you have float number so let's let's initialize this array with uh, float as a data type now before i do that let me print the current data type of this array so here it is saying it is integer 32 now if i want to initialize the same array with a different data type then i need to use d type argument so here you can say d type is equal to np dot here you can say float 64 so float 64 is one of the types now 64 means it occupies 8 bytes so now when you print the item size instead of 4 it's gonna be 8 because now each of these elements they are float numbers and they occupy eight bytes so if you print a here you can see it one point something so this is now float okay so let me just clear this all right another important property that an array has is uh, let me just create okay so it is size so size is basically the size of your array total total number of elements. So here you can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So it has like total six elements. Then you have shape. So shape represents the information on dimension. So short of like width and height. So here it is. It has three rows. So one, two, three. So three rows and two columns. So one and two. All right now we already covered the d type uh, d type argument so here i covered the d type argument let me just copy it from here so you can use d type to initialize your array with a specific uh, data type okay so let's Okay, so now instead of float 64, you can also specify your type to be the complex number. So if you say complex, what it's going to do is it's going to create an array with complex numbers. Now, sometimes you want to initialize your array with some placeholder numbers. Let's say you want to initialize your array with all zeros. If and if you want to do that, you will use np.zeros function and just mention your shape here. Shape means the information on your dimension. So this is creating an array of three by four, three rows, four columns, one, two, three, four, all initialized with zeros. You can do same thing, but with ones. So instead of zeros, you will say ones and it will initialize all the elements with one number uh, 
now sometimes you want to use a function similar to range so you know that in python there is this range function that we use for list right so what this function does is it's gonna create a list of uh, numbers from 0 to 4 so that's what it did now numpy also has similar function it is called a range so you if you do np here if you do np dot a range or a range basically one to five then this is gonna create a array of one to four numbers so five is not included by default that's how the uh, even range function behaves so this is very similar to python's native range function okay uh, now sometimes you want to uh, do the same thing so let's say initialize array which from one to four but then you want to have like steps of two numbers so this means that you start at one then you take a step of two so one plus two is three three plus two is five but then this is your end so this is your start this is your end and these are like number of steps so once you reach five you will stop so that's why it is one and three here you can also use a lean space function so let me demo that np dot lean space to now here you will specify your start number and end number first okay so you will say okay my start number is let's say one and my stop number is say five and in between these two numbers i want to generate let's say 10 numbers okay so what this will do is it will generate 10 numbers between 1 and 5 which are linearly spaced so you can see that you got this nice range of 1 and 5 and then these numbers are linearly spaced now if you do the same thing with let's say 5 then they are spaced by number 1 okay you can do whatever you can do even uh, 20 this is pretty useful if you want to create like this linear sequence of numbers. You can also reshape your arrays with reshape functions. So for example, if you have this array, then the shape of this array is three by two. It has three rows and two columns. Now let's say you want to reshape this to be two by three. So you can say reshape two by three. Basically now you want two rows and three columns and it would work so you can re reshape it to any dimensions that you like and the dimension should be compatible with the, your initial dimension so you can even do a dot reshape to be uh, let's say you want let's say six rows and one column so you see six rows one column you can also use a ravel function to flatten your array. So this will just flatten it, make it one dimension. So you have n dimension array, when you call a dot ravel, it will flatten it, make it one dimension. All right, uh, now when I print a after flattening it, I see that it's still an original array because a dot ravel will not touch the original array it will return a new array so you can capture the output into new variable and have access to flatten structure so that applies to all of these functions just remember that it's not gonna alter your original array so that's something you have to keep it in mind now let's look at some of the mathematical functions that uh, numpy array cover so you have many functions. so let's say i have this array okay if you do a dot min it's gonna print your minimum element which is one a dot max will print your maximum element which is six okay uh, now you can also do a dot sum and it's gonna sum all the numbers together now there is a concept of axis in a uh, numpy array axis means your dimensions so my axis 0 will be these columns okay and my axis 1 will be uh, these rows right here 
so when i do a dot sum and when i say x is equal to zero it's gonna look at each of these columns so it added these numbers together five three eight and one nine so it printed nine six four ten and two is twelve so it's added these together and printed twelve if you want to sum all the elements in rows together then you use axis one so here 2 and 1 is 3, 3 and 4 is 7, 5 and 6 is 11. So that's what it did. So that's what the axis means here. You can also do a square root. So if you do sqrt, a dot sqrt, uh, let's see. So if you do, so a dot, so s square root is not a function of individual array element it's a generic function so you have to do np dot sqrt so np is your numpy module so it's gonna compute the square root of each of these numbers so for example four square root you know is two then two square root you obviously you don't remember but if you open your calculator and find the square root it's gonna be this okay you can also do a uh, standard deviation so np dot standard deviation so standard deviation of all these numbers is here again no one is, is gonna remember this but if you do your math then you will find that it will be this number okay we are going to now look at some basic mathematical operations and for this I'm going to have these two arrays oh, I, I just copy pasted it from my notepad but it didn't work anyways i will just create it here so i have two dimensional array here so one two uh, three four okay and i have this second array Okay, this is my first dimension. My second dimension is five, six, uh, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, oops, I forgot a uh, closing angle bracket. Okay, so I have these two array A, A and B, two dimensional array. Yeah, uh, now NumPy supports very basic operations such as let's say if you want to add them together it you can do it using plus operator this is something you can't do with python native list so it's very convenient uh, with NumPy arrays so this added these together 5 and 1 is 6 6 and 2 is 8 it's basically adding the individual elements you can do multiplication you can do division you can do all sorts of operation you can also do a matrix product so if you do a dot b it's gonna do a matrix products of these two individual matrices all right so that was all about uh, numpy array it, it wasn't all about numpy arrays actually we still need to cover a few topics such as indexing slicing iterating uh, stacking these uh, numpy arrays together but all those remaining things we are going to cover in our next tutorial until then thank you for watching and good luck with your python and numpy learning thanks again